Good afternoon. My name is Donna Agrell, and I'm here in Switzerland with the Fagutino research team at the Scola Cantorum Basiliensis, consisting of Aurea Dominguez, Zoe Matthews, Letizia Viola, Giovanni Battista Grazio Dio, and Thomas Drescher. Some years ago in Basel, where there is a very large community of historical bassoonists, questions came up about the absence of small bassoons from the 18th and 19th century historical performance practice studies. A few scholars, among them James Kopp and Klaus Hubmann, have written various articles and book chapters about small sized bassoons, but otherwise relatively little information is available. At that point, we decided to embark on in-depth research about the subject, resulting in three research projects, two, including the current one, funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation and hosted at the Scola, and a smaller experimental project with 3D printed instruments. The initial aims in both the pilot project and the current study were to create an instrument catalog and a repertoire list accompanied by musicological research. And finally, reconstructions of several models to be used in trials, workshops and pedagogical applications. We soon realized that whereas we had expected to find 40 or perhaps 50 surviving instruments, a substantially greater number existed. There are 116 entries in our catalog to date. Fortunately, it was possible to visit numerous collections over the past years and take measurements, photos and videos of over 40 of these instruments. Here is a short demonstration by Aurea of the FT38 Savary No. 12, located in the Waterhouse Collection in the UK. And sometimes instruments are brought to us, as seen in this clip where Giovanni demonstrates the FT49, Cus number two, a tenor rune in F with instrument builder Vincenzo Onida, playing the beginning of a duo by Mozart, a suggestion made by Klaus Hubmann, by the way. Our data sets, which are published in open access at the repository Zenodo, include photographic material, endoscopic videos, basic information and measurement sheets. On our website, you'll find our current instrument catalogs and links to the data sets. Let's look at some examples. Here is the FT2, a 13 key tenor rune by Adler. Clicking on the FT number takes you to the photo gallery. Clicking on data set draws this up where you can preview or download any of the files listed. Select a file and scroll down the preview window. Here you see the stamp and here the basic data sheet. Another example is the FT18, a four key tenor rune by Krauss. Let's preview the complete measurement sheet. Or just the measurements of the bell bore. For the current project, we selected four instruments to reconstruct based on criteria of accessibility and condition. 
and finding a representative mix of instrument types from different periods. Furthermore, the instruments in question needed to be of the highest quality in very good to excellent condition and, when possible, with a vocal. Fortunately, it was possible to use exactly the instruments we thought offered the best variety for this study. And I would like to add that all four are very beautiful instruments indeed. Last year, before this project began, we carried out a small experiment using 3D CT technology to scan and print two instruments we had at hand to see how well this process would work. The results from that experiment were very positive and you will hear one of these 3D models being played by Zoe later on, along with its original, played by Letizia. As these outcomes were very successful, we went ahead and scanned the four models selected for the current study. We made two versions of 3D copies. The as-is bore, with any of its current deformities, and an estimated round or builder's bore, which can demonstrate how a reconstruction in wood will function. After scanning, CAD models were created by our partners in Germany. Ricardo Simeon in Basel took the next step and made a set of modified CADs with round bores. Both CADs were 3D printed. Now three of the four models have been completed and the fourth is underway. That means we will soon have a total of eight 3D printed copies, four with the as-is bores and four with round bores, in addition to the four 3D copies from our first experiment. Likewise, all metal and ivory keys were scanned and printed in metal. Printed in metal sounds a little misleading. The process is actually done by making a negative mold and filling it with a liquid form of metal. If you are interested in reading more technical detail about the processes used in both projects, a description can be found at the link on the screen. The evaluations we have been able to do thus far between the two kinds of bores of the printed copies started with experimental models of last year, FT40, Anonymous 11, and FT44, Sharer 3, both Fagottini. Here you can hear Letizia demonstrating both the original and rounded bores. Scherer original borung. This spring, we were asked to collaborate in a recording of cantatas by Friedrich Wilhelm Zakow. His Easter cantata, Dies ist der Tag, calls for two bassonetti in obbligato and tutti functions. At the time we prepared this presentation, Zoe and Letizia were beginning to rehearse together using the original anonymous Fagottino FT40, as well as one of the 3D copies. You can hear small sections from movement 6 and 11 of this cantata and judge any differences in the instruments for yourselves. Thank you. 
I suspect that because the models we have chosen for our current study were in very fine condition to begin with, we will probably not notice very many big differences in the types of bores. Two of the original Fagottini are in museums, so we will not be able to compare them to the copies. But the two tenor runes are privately owned and we have permission to play them. We will soon have the 3D copies of our selected four instruments and can begin with our comparisons. After evaluation of the printed copies, wooden bassoons will be built by our partner, the instrument maker Vincenzo Onida in Milan. He has already begun with constructions based on the CADs derived from the scans and by the end of next year, these will all be finished and ready to be used in trials and workshops, along with the 3D models. To refer to small size bassoons, we are using the terms Fagotino and tenor room. The terminology previously used is very ambiguous. Fagotino, bassonetto, tenor room, hog fagot, quart, quint, sext fagot, and various other names can be found. For this project, we have chosen to use the first two terms, fagotino, as a general term when referring to small sized bassoons, but also for those with octave transpositions, and tenorum. Tenorum is used for larger than octave models, and when possible, we specify which kind of transpositions they are using, such as uh, tenorum in F or tenorum in G. From 1700 to the turn of the 20th century, small sized bassoons were being made by many famous European windmakers, such as Savary, Grenzer, Scherer, Adler, Denner, Krauss, and more. The following animation gives an idea of how these instruments were distributed according with a timeline. It is made by including all the surviving instruments found so far. Those are placed in the map according to their approximate date. Every dot represents a small size bassoon. Orange is for fagotino, an octave high instrument. Blue for tenorum in G, a fifth higher, and green for tenorum in F. Between 1680-1780, most small size bassoons were fagotino, representing the photo by these orange dots, and they are mainly found in the German area and Paris and London. Between 1780 and 1810, instruments in G start to come together with Fagottini and they expand their locations. In the time frame between 1810 and 1850, many instruments in F appear, especially in Paris, as well as in other regions. The late 18th century until mid-19th century could be called the golden age of small size bassoons, considering the large number of instruments found across Europe. From the second half of the 19th century, there was a marked decrease in the constructions and the usage of small size bassoons until 1914, where is, uh, our time frame ends. Approaching repertoire was a different kind of challenge. Terminology was problematic and confusing, and small bassoons were not often indicated in the scores. Yet, all these instruments were built to play something. There are some music examples that call directly for Fagottino, such as the case of the opera Siface by Porpora. And we also find the term tenorum, like in this example from 1807 of a march published in the United States. But there are not so many examples, despite of the large number of instruments we find. This means that our approach to repertoire research includes a systematic re-evaluation of standard bassoon repertoire, based on range and facility, considering which transpositions will be practical for the performer. A very good example of this practice can be seen in this live performance of the Beethoven Trio, where Letizia Viola is playing on an original anonymous Viennese tenor room from the early 19th century. The beginning of the adagio is written in an extremely high register, awkward for the full-size bassoons, but easily and fluently playable on a tenor room in G. In his book The Bassoon, James Cope notes that this work was dedicated to an amateur player, and he suggests also it would be very possible that he was playing on a tenor room like this one.
also finding evidence that the practice of replacement was not uncommon. Some reports include a tenor room replacing the English horn voice in French opera repertoire. We have a direct evidence by Constant Pierre explaining how the orchestra in Bordeaux was using a tenor room in F instead of English horns. We are seeking historical reference to performance, players and makers in order to obtain a clear picture of how, where and when these instruments were used in everyday musical life. Our work consists of both uncovering works specifically scored for small bassoons as well as reconsidering which works may be performed on these instruments. In order to be able to make repertoire suggestions, we have developed a system to determine the best instruments for a given work, using an analysis of aspects such as range, keys and fingering combinations in certain transpositions, as well as other elements uh, within a specific musical context, such as tempo and dynamics. This kind of analysis demands familiarity with various kinds of fingering system and performing experience with historical instruments. Another example of how we put into practice the rethinking of repertoire is this aria by Telemann, performed in this case on the Fagotino by Zoe Matthews. <laughs> Other musicological research we are busy with also includes investigating performers, performances, and historical pedagogy. Where are we headed next? Ultimately, we can imagine that small-sized bassoons will be integrated into educational programs, both for children and in professional studies, and these instruments will offer further development of period instrument performance practice on a wider international platform. Thank you very much for your attention.